So Far From God is a novel by Chicana writer Ana Castillo, first published by W. W. Norton and Company in 1993. In that same year, the New York Times included it in the annual Notable Books of the Year list. Many credit Castillo with founding and developing Sikhanisma, an extension of Chicana feminism centered on women's role in decolonization and community improvement. As evidenced in So Far From God, the credit is well deserved, said in Tome, New Mexico, the story takes up the chief concerns of Sikhanisma in a late 20th century scene. Much like Castillo's other works, the novel employs magical realism, drawing from Latin American folklore, Chicano culture, shamanism, and indigenous practices as it follows the central characters throughout the complicated web of their lives. So far from God begins with the death of La Loca, the youngest of Sophie's four daughters, at three years old. At her funeral, mourners are shocked when she rises from her coffin. In the wake of her unexpected resurrection, Loka grows up an eccentric recluse. Meanwhile, her sisters suffer many setbacks in life. Despite a successful career as a news broadcaster, Esperanza feels unable to move on from her abusive ex-boyfriend, Ruben. Meanwhile, the beautiful Kerida becomes pregnant shortly after her high school graduation. When she discovers Mela, the father, has been unfaithful, she has Loka perform an abortion. Finally, Faye suffers a prolonged nervous breakdown after her fiancé, Tom, breaks off the engagement via letter, she starts screaming and cannot stop. One night, Caridad staggers home, having been brutally mutilated by a malagra or monster. After a year of caring for both Caridad and Faye, Loka helps the two recover through prayer. The healing of her sisters inspires Esperanza to call Ruben and finally break things off with him. At that moment, their father, Domingo, a lifelong gambler from whom the girls have been estranged for over two decades, returns. After her recovery, Caridad obtains powers of clairvoyance, predicting the death of her beloved mare, Corazon. Foreseeing the tragedy, she moves out and takes the mare with her but ultimately fails to prevent Corazon's death. The loss pushes her to take an apprenticeship under her landlady, Felicia, a curandera, or folk healer. Meanwhile, Esperanza's news agency has sent her to cover an armed conflict in the Middle East. During Lenten week, Caridad goes on a pilgrimage with Felicia to Chimayo. There, she becomes infatuated with a beautiful woman she sees resting on a wall. When Felicia sends Caridad to take a cleansing mineral bath, she goes missing for a whole year, until Felicia's godson, Francisco, stumbles on her living in a cave in the mountains. When Caridad finally decides to take a mineral bath, she chances upon the woman on the wall and learns her name, Esmeralda. Shortly after her 53rd birthday, Sophie decides to run for mayor of Tome, seeking to lift the village from economic depression. After much work, she establishes successful projects such as a wool weaving enterprise, a food cooperative, and a low-interest loan fund. Eventually, she earns the informal title of mayor. One day, the ghost of La Llorona warns Loco of Esperanza's death, which the U.S. Army confirms a week later. However, Loco and Caridad continue to converse with Esperanza's spirit. Meanwhile, Faye moves out and marries Cosimero, her cousin, and then quits the bank for a better-paying manufacturing job at Acme International. However, her health rapidly declines due to constant exposure to deadly chemicals the job demands. After almost a year, she is diagnosed with cancer and dies shortly after. After finding Caridad in the cave, Francisco became infatuated with her. He follows her and Esmeralda to Acoma Pueblo, where Esmeralda's grandmother lives. There, Caridad receives a powerful spiritual vision, leading her and Esmeralda to leap from a cliff's edge. Francisco looks for their broken bodies and finds nothing as if the two simply disappeared in flight. Following the deaths of his three daughters, Domingo returns to gambling, Sophie finally divorces him after he gambles away the deed to their house. After he moves out, Sophie has the local doctor examine Loka, who is rapidly losing weight. Dr. Tolentino concludes she has an incurable affliction, AIDS. He and Felicia try to treat Loka but to no avail. On Holy Friday, Sophie and Loka join the way of the cross procession. 
Six months later, a lady in blue appears before the terminally ill loca. After the figure sings her afado, or Portuguese folk song, loca falls asleep in her arms and dies peacefully. Years later, Sophie becomes the founder and first president of the worldwide organization MOMAS, Mothers of Martyrs and Saints.